Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BSV TV. I'm your host, Sir Toshi, and on this show, we'll be defending the one and only truly genuine Bitcoin. The Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto designed in his white paper as a peer to peer electronic cash system for the world. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. So all the statements that you hear on this show are opinion and must only ever be taken as opinion. They are never to be taken as any form of advice, family, financial, sexual or otherwise. And on that note, let's sit back, relax, have some fun and enjoy the show. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and set your own fee on Streamanity. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced. Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit, he signed in my presence uh, the private, using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with, a message of my choosing. At Enchain, we've just funded a number of universities doing, so far, a test up to one gigabyte because it validates what we've already done independently. We've tested up to 380 gigabyte blocks. We have tested 1 million transactions a second and transaction sizes up to 20 megabytes. Super complex scripts, basically ones that can run operating systems. That's basically all of global commerce times about 50. On top of that, we can have complex scripts. On top of that, we can scale each of those transactions 1,000 times, which effectively means about a billion transactions per second, which means we can then have all derivatives, all complex trades. That means high frequency trading. It means everything that happens globally. Is the market that effectively BSV is going for, is that global e-commerce, which is currently valued at $29 trillion? No, that's too small. Buy and sell Bitcoin instantly at bsvgravity.com. And you can now book and pay for your winter holiday at skibsv.com. Good afternoon, everybody. Got it spot on this afternoon. Right on at five o'clock and then caught this uh, home screen as soon as the intro is finished. Feeling good. Let's hope the rest of the show goes just as well. So uh, I already had a laugh today getting a few uh, comments on my YouTube videos from um, shitcoin B crashes, getting really upset with me about my intro. <laughs> I, <clears throat> you, you cannot help these shitcoiners. Literally, shitcoiners with shit for brains. It's kind of like, look, I, I'm doing my best to explain everything to you. I really am. But I can't waste too much time on you, as like uh, Satoshi Nakamoto said. Um, if you don't get it or don't understand it, I've not got time to convince you. Sorry. Like, I need to move on to those who are, uh, you know, more open, more uh, intellectually capable of understanding the logic and rationale that goes into this. <laughs> but uh, the reason we start with the opening screen <clears throat> is because um, previously I used to broadcast live on, on YouTube. But YouTube uh, deleted two of my channels, then they prevented me from editing my shows, then they started deleting episodes. I thought this is absolutely outrageous. So now we uh, broadcast live on Twitch TV, live at five every day from whichever country I'm in, currently in the UK. And so uh, you just go to www.twitch.tv forward slash Satoshi TV to catch the live show. I want to give everybody as much chance as possible to catch the live show because uh, it's the trailer that then goes up onto YouTube and then the uh, the full episode goes on to uh, Streamanity for a very, very small amount of just 20 cents for all the effort that I put me in and the uh, the information that I'm able to uh, give out to you. Like Literally, my heart and soul goes into these shows because I love Bitcoin because I can see the potential that it's got. So let's go on to this opening screen. <laughs> Again, like I try and make so you know, I'm gonna say something new about this like every day, but it still cracks me up because like shitcoiners just don't get it. They don't get it. <clears throat> Bitcoin, as probably Ryan X would say something like this, Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. It is a cash system that is electronic. It is peer-to-peer, -peer, a peer-to-peer -peer cash electronic system. In fact, almost a peer-to-peer -peer electronic 
cash system. Or if you want to put it like in more details, Bitcoin is the foundation layer for all future digital technologies secured and underpinned by economic principles. It is going to be the digital network that everything runs on. The entire internet will run on Bitcoin, probably including all the information maybe on the deep web. Um, certainly like all businesses, all businesses currently, particularly like those in the financial sector, have their businesses stored in multiple locations and on multiple servers and employ multiple services like Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Cloud and all this kind of stuff. Because if they were to lose a single record of a customer's transactions, particularly in the UK, they can be fined 10% of gross global profit. It is huge because trust in the system is what underpins the financial system. Now this is what Bitcoin brings. Bitcoin brings trust. It brings economic security, and not only economic security, uh, blockchain security, where data is safe, where it can now no longer be cracked, hacked, altered, changed, or deleted. It can be trusted. As uh, Stefan Nielsen said, it is a universal source of truth. Now, because that technology has value, it means that that value can be traded in the form of a token, which is Bitcoin. So it's Bitcoin that gives that value monetary value. Now, when you are trading money, one of the most fundamental things that's uh, um, the, or important about money is that there is reasonable expectation in trade. In that, you can prove to someone that you have traded with that person and that you have exchanged the medium of exchange in exchange for the good or service that you expected then there has to be reasonable expectation in trade. There has to be reasonable expectation of the good or service that matches the equivalent value that you have passed over within the medium of exchange. That's why when Bitcoin increases in value, you will be able to buy more things with it because the value of Bitcoin is increasing. Therefore, you'll be able to buy more valuable items like cars and houses and stuff like that. What you cannot do is trade a digital piece of crap on the Lightning Network because the data on the Lightning Network does not go through the blockchain. Therefore, the data is not secure. It can be deleted. It can be cracked, act, altered, changed and deleted. Therefore, it has absolutely no value. And without value, there is no reasonable expectation in trade. It's like, it's like writing a check with invisible ink or giving somebody a disintegrating dollar note. It has no value. I can't stress this enough. So that's where lightning falls down. Uh, and it will never be used as a medium of exchange, but they know that. That's why they say, well, it's not that anymore. It's, a, uh, it's digital gold. It's a store of value. Well, okay. Well, that doesn't sound like Bitcoin because the only person who has the right to define something as Bitcoin is Satoshi Nakamoto who designed Bitcoin. And he defined Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Now, cash is the most liquid form of money. <laughs> now, money has to be lots of things. And one of them, for example, is entirely divisible, fungible, uh, you know, anyway, all, all these things. But one of the most important things is that it has to be neutral. Like commodity money is neutral. Commodity means it is common to everyone. Like common does not mean it has a central point of authority or control. That is a security. So CoreCoin, BTC, is owned and controlled by Blockstream. And uh, if you don't believe me, we'll, uh, we'll have a quick listen to this actually in a second. Here we go. Hold on. I'm just going to... Uh... Oh, I should have... Uh... Should have had this plan before, but we're going to keep this page up while I'm doing this. This is excellent loving this. Right, check it out. So I've actually got uh, YouTube on a uh, screen number two, but you can only see screen number one, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, so uh, here we go. Just finding uh, my channel and uh, my videos. Here we go. Rock and roll. Proof of work is what I'm looking at here. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. God, 
I've done lots. All right, here we go. Just uh, getting to the bottom here. Right, so uh, those of you who listen to my show regularly, you can probably guess the video that I'm going to bring up. But again, this is for newbies who don't understand what I've just said about how Blockstream control uh, uh, CoolCoin BTC. And the reason they control it is because they segregated the signatures on the 24th of uh, August 2017. And uh, it was the signatures that hold all the users and developers on the network to account. Once the signatures has been broken, whoever it was that broke those signatures, which was Blockstream, now control the system and the system is fundamentally worthless. So uh, let's see what Samson Mao, who is the uh, chief strategy officer of Blockstream, says about BTC CoreCoin. Here we go. Have a, have a quick listen to this. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and watch this video free on Streamanity. Bitcoin was created by, by the central bankers that enslave you today. It is their scapegoat. Uh, <laughs> how, do you want, how do you answer those, Max and Stacey? I think the evidence is clear that uh, they do not control it. It, it. There's 10 years, almost 11 years now of a track record. Yeah, yeah. Blockstream well, controls they, it. They, I'm sorry, go ahead. Who does? Blockstream. Oh, <laughs> all right. I was looking at you when I said that. Yeah, I'm a black spy. <laughs> I have a spy. I'm, I'm more than spies. <laughs> no, so um, this, um, you know, it's an interesting. No, that it's it. There's. Yeah, but it, it's interesting. But that, 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 that there's a uh, uh, completely and utterly gobsmacked out there. And you can hear it in their voices. That was genuine, and we know it's genuine because it's true. But they just simply don't want you to believe it. So that's core cool coin over done for its value is a complete what well, its price is a complete bubble and it is going to pop real hard real hard uh it can't not because it only takes like one intelligent person to realize this and go actually that's not worth anything and then the house of cards collapses that is it so uh, when they took control of the, uh, uh, the the manual, socially engineered control of the ticker symbol, Bitcoin just simply carried on. Uh, the, the, the protocol hadn't changed. And then Roger Ver and his crony mates thought, oh, you know what? We'll have a go at controlling Bitcoin this time. We want it to uh, fulfill our, um, our stupid ideology and narrative. We want this to be available for criminals so that everyone can become a crack egg, crack addict and smoke crack in their own homes because that's what everyone wants <laughs> everybody wants to be a crack addict who doesn't <laughs> it's so ridiculous but what they don't understand is that one if it is anonymous like they're trying to do which they have done with cash fusion and if they have controlled it by adding checkpoints and changing the protocol every uh, six months and <laughs> discussing governance governance is centralization they're like oh yeah we really need to uh yeah we really need to sort out governance because nobody knows who's doing what there is no governance when it is completely neutral it's so stupid it's it just i i just have to laugh in order to alleviate the stress from looking at them and going oh my god are you how how am i existing on the same planet as someone as stupid as you like you know am i in a different reality here <laughs> it's just, you know, absolutely, absolutely bonkers. But by by making their uh, uh, B crash anonymous, as in like there is no reasonable expectation in trade, which means big business and global commerce will just simply never use it, which means it is then a closed market for criminals only. But then criminals also don't like to identify themselves as criminal. Because if they, because there is no such thing as a clever criminal. Because if they were clever, they wouldn't be labelled as a criminal. Because criminals do everything they can to avoid being labelled as a criminal. And if you're going to use Bcrash, it means you are only using it for criminal purposes and you are outing yourself as a criminal. I can't believe that they don't get this. It's so ridiculous. So anyway, they centralized it and did all that crap and Bitcoin just simply had to carry on. And Craig and Calvin were understandably like, you know, tearing their hair out, you know, trying to explain it as best they could. But, you know, now they're off building, promoting, you know, doing their thing. It's just like, right, boys, I've got this. I'll take the reins. Let me see if I can explain this. I haven't got anything better to do. <laughs> 
because it cracked me up and I love Bitcoin. I love Bitcoin. So uh, yeah, that's uh, there's BTC, there's Bcrash, and uh, this is Bitcoin. <laughs> These other two chains are literally dead because a medium of exchange is competitive by nature. Uh, it is a tool that enables, encourages, and accelerates the facilitation of trade, which means everybody will just simply use the medium of exchange that fulfills the trade in the best way. And the one that fulfills the trade in the best way is the one that's the cheapest, the fastest, and the most scaled. And, the, and that's the one that everybody will eventually use. And even as more and more people use it, it becomes more and more valuable because they will continue to, more and more people will continue to come in and use it. Like it, I, yeah. <laughs> it's just hilarious. It cracks me up. So uh, again, I mean, hey, I'm, I'm going to try and like spice it up, you know, all the time, like make it different. So uh, this is the uh, the coin crap chart. And again, I've tried to make this really simple for everybody. So a security has its value secured by the single entity that issued it and created it, like Ripple. XRP. <laughs> XRP was created and issued by Ripple Labs. You cannot get it any other way than buying it directly from Ripple Labs. It is absolutely a security. And it's not money because it burns to balance the ledger. Proof of stake is now a security, which means Ethereum is now fundamentally worthless. Its price will soon match its fundamental value at zero, along with all of these pieces of crap. This is why I call it a shit coin market, and this is coin crap, literally. And as I've said many times already, it pains me to say that Litecoin is the only cryptocurrency in the entire market cap that I know of that is actually a genuine commodity. And yet we know that Charlie Lee exit scammed the shit out of it, and he is going to get away with it because he never encouraged anybody to buy it. He only ever said it was silver to Bitcoin's gold, Bitcoin's little brother. He never suggested anybody should buy it. It is a commodity because it uses proof of work. <laughs> like Charles Hoskinson is definitely gonna get caught because he, even though IOHA is the only company that can mine Cardano, they did an ICO. It is absolutely a security and he exit scammed it for 600,000, 600 million dollars. Like, ah, uh, like, so Charlie Lee, you know, like the greatest exit scam in history. In history, 300 million out clean. That's what I estimate. You know, um, I, want, I want the book, you know. If, it, if he doesn't produce a book and come clean and tell everybody how he did it, I will never stop. <laughs> I will never stop telling the story. I want to hear it from him. I'm going to make him admit what he's done because I know what he's done and he knows what he's done. Oh dear. But the only genuine commodity is Bitcoin, as I've just explained. It is commodity money using proof of work, truly decentralized because it fits all the pillars of decentralization in the fact that the chain of signatures is still intact. It holds all the users on the network to account. The protocol is locked so that anyone and everyone can build on it. There is infinite scale so that there's constantly new market to compete for. There is proof of work so that there is competition between those who sustain the network. And there's a fixed supply. That's it. That's literally it. But uh, in terms of uh, pictures, let me just, uh, let me just, let me just, let me just uh, add my favorite picture there. Just so that uh, people know what I'm talking about. Here we go. This is the one I'm going to bring up. Oh, yes. There it is. <laughs> Charlie Lee said this. So the interviewer said, Charlie, you created Litecoin. It has to be something you're incredibly passionate about. Charlie Lee's response. Most of you probably know I kind of created it just for fun, right? I didn't expect it to become anything. <laughs> you mean he didn't want it to become anything. He just wanted it to go up enough so that he could exit scam out of it. Oh, dear, oh dear, Charlie. Charlie, I've caught you. I've caught you like I know. So... Let's get on with these figures then. This is the crypto forecast, the strength of the system, the health of the network. Uh, we have got a Bitcoin 0.4% of hash rate, Bcrash 1.3, uh, CoreCoin 98.6. Network nodes, same as ever since the uh, 15th of November 2018. 2.3% for uh, Bitcoin, 10% for Bcrash, 87.7% for CoreCoin. 
Transactions, we're coming back, coming back at you. 35.5% for Bitcoin, 13.9% for Bcrash, 506 for CoreCoin. And block size, 34.8% for Bitcoin, 9.4% for Bcrash, and 55.8% for CoreCoin. Boo. Now let's play spot the biggest block on Bcrash. Let's see what, what size blocks Hathor are mining over on their chain. So random number, I can see a 403 from uh, Jihan. Oh, uh, via BTC, 513. Let's see, uh, see what else we got. Five th oh, they got a 1.3 from Antpool. But uh, Hathor still mining blocks with data in it. Slowly strangling the chain, making it less, uh, more competitive and therefore less profitable for these other uh, shitcoin enterprises to mine it. So are we going to get more than a 1.3? I don't think so. No, 1.3. Uh, congratulations to them. It's quite big for uh, Bcrash, considering they're an absolute piece of shit. <laughs> uh, and we've got CoreCoin again. I saw uh, Hathor is mining it a little bit, but again, they, uh, give them, they've purposely given themselves a one megabyte restriction because they don't want people to use it. But you're not meant to use it. Store of value, censorship resistant money. Don't spam the network. It's only for large millionaire transactions. All right. <laughs> Like, I can't believe that people actually believe that shit. Like, it just cracks me up. Uh, so let's see what's going on on Bitcoin. Spot the biggest block straight away. I can see a, a five megabyte block by uh, Mimple Norpal. Congratulations to them. They had the biggest block yesterday. Another two megabyte block from them. Uh, Hathor still chomping away at the small blocks. You know, making these other uh, mining operations having to uh, work, for the, work for the dinner. Uh, Tower with a 6.8. Oh, look at this. Tal, 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 tal. Tal is loving that. Uh, be interesting to see. Oh, we've got 7.7 .7 megabyte block again. I mean, 7.7 .7 is tiny for Bitcoin, but in comparison to these two shit coins, it's actually really big, you know. So let's go through these graphs. Uh, Bitcoin Astro Bar Network. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, proof of Bar Network again. Core coin B crash will stop overnight, literally one day. Uh, B crash versus Bitcoin hash rate. B crash versus Bitcoin proof of work. It's twenty five thousand times cheaper to transact on Bitcoin than it is Core Coin. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> Shit, coiners don't get it. I don't know what they've got going through their heads. Are absolutely insane. But you can't really help them. Uh, it is currently uh, six point three percent more profitable to mine on Core Coin, but that's because the price, the you know, number go up and all that. So. Daily average Bitcoin block size by network. Oh, cool coin winning. Transactions by network. Cool coin winning. Transactions by block. Cool coin winning. Oh, catching up. Catching up. Catching up. Uh, Bitcoin fees. Bitcoin smashing it. Bitcoin fees. Satoshi's Bitcoin smashing it. Block reward ratio. Again, you know, the coming time, which just uh, follows value. Well, uh, will follows price, which follows value. And BSV is the only one with any fundamental value, as I've just explained earlier in the show. And uh, daily accumulated uh, blockchain growth. Again, just laughing at Bcrash here for lulls. That's it. Global hash rate, seven days. Binance still up there. Oh, um, you know, BTC.com macking it hard. Uh, pooling is now dropped out of the uh, top four in fifth position with the uh, Huobi and Binance fastening themselves this week. Oh, hash rate, 24 hours. Huobi turning up the heat. Cano turning up the heat. Pushing uh, BTC.com and uh, pooling. Down into uh, fifth and seventh, and uh, and pool, which is bit main again in uh, in sixth. So let's see if that looks uh, similar to uh, Core Coin. Yeah, apart from Binance, you we've swapped rounds, but again, uh, yeah, well, pooling has been uh, pushed down into seventh. Yeah, uh, Cano up there on uh, on Core Coin. Yeah, psh, who knows? Absolute piece of crap. Uh, B crash. Here we go. I have Thor. 34% on that chain, making it uh, making it more competitive for these other shitcoin enterprises to mine on it. Again, Ampool and uh, BTC.com are uh, Bitmain, respectively. Absolute shitcoin enterprises. And uh, via BTC, for whatever reason, um, yeah, look, they're on uh, they're on CoreCoin. They've turned up the heat. And uh, last time, or well, yesterday, when we looked at uh, Bitcoin, uh, via BTC had jumped off the chain. Oh, they're back on it. Uh, still only small amount. Absolutely crazy. Uh, you know, knowing what I know, I would be doing what Tal is doing. I would just simply be all over this shit. Same with Hathor, same with Norpool, Mempool. I don't think they're on any other chains. Yeah, look at that. 
They know because they are not stupid. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, um, yeah, we'll have a look at uh, Bitcoin Blocks Live next. Again, newbies, just check this out. This is the, uh, well, this is the, f this is kind of like the chain having its workout right in front of our very eyes. See, look at that. Uh, transactions per second back up. Last few days, that's been like, pff, like 0.3 or like, you know, one or two transactions a second. Now we're back up to five. That's more like it. Rock and roll. So these are... Uh, Vertical rectangle blocks you can see scrolling across the top. These are transactions being recognized by the nodes on the network. Underneath it are the uh, the organizations who are generating those transactions. So you can see we've got uh, Predict Ecology, Plaintext, Peergame.com, Metanet, Twitch, TDXP app, um, Preve. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. And then uh, to the right of that, we've got um, the transaction ID of each of those transactions. Input, output, type, and op return. Now, when those transactions are recognized by the nodes on the network, they're then thrown into the uh, meme pool, which is where they are then competed for by the payment processors, stroke miners, in order to um, put them in a block, store the block on the blockchain, and then win the Coinbase of that block, which is the uh, block reward, which is currently 6.25 Bitcoin, which uh, at today's price, just is about $1,000 uh, per block, which is what they're winning. So if we scroll over the biggest block here at the bottom, and it's currently a 7.78 in the highlighted rectangular uh, box below that, you can see the hash number of that block, the height, who it was mined by, size, time and date, transaction count, and the total fees in the block. And in this particular block, it's $5.27. But uh, uh, the idea or the idea behind Bitcoin is that Bitcoin initially subsidizes those miners. It, in, it enables the system to financially fund itself before it becomes economically self-sustaining. So this is why the block reward gets cut in half every 210,000 blocks, because it is a race against the block reward to uh, build the chain and get it economically sustaining itself. So it can then continue indefinitely. That's the whole point. It's not scarcity you make number go up. It is utility. And as uh, we'll have a look at my favorite picture in just a second, we'll look at it now, here we go. Boom. As has been predicted, these, these, these are the transactions. Uh, it is expected, the uh, anticipated, the crossover between the block reward, which is uh, currently uh, 6.25 Bitcoin, which equals you know, uh, just over $1,000. It is expected that the, uh, the fees in the block will surpass the block reward subsidy by quarter one, 2021, which is this year. Something is coming and it is gonna be big. Huge, as uh, President of the United States would say, huge. <laughs> uh, let's have a look at some of our other metrics for the newbies again, this is Bitcoin info charts, lots of metrics here that are quite interesting. Again, XRP trying to justify themselves even though they're a piece of absolute shit. Absolutely a security, as is Ethereum, but you know, you these will change uh, very in the near future, if you ask me. But uh, you can go to these other metrics here, so uh, all the shit coins across the top and the, uh, the highlighted tabs on the left hand side, you can uh, compare the metrics, so we'll look at uh, uh, average uh, transactions or daily transactions. We'll go on to the uh, log. We'll do three years and I will take Doge out because that's an absolute joke, literally a joke. We'll add in uh, B crash for lulls and of course we'll add in Bitcoin because that's the only one worth looking at anyway. There we go. So for any investors who are watching the show for the first time, they're like, oh, what's that purple line? That looks like it's going up. Uh, so this purple line looks like it only started on the 15th of November 2018 and uh, literally by uh, by June the following year uh, it had already surpassed Bcrash and Litecoin and it has surpassed CoreCoin and oh I mean it has jumped above Ethereum in the past look at that I mean look at the look at the rate of development is what that is it's absolutely staggering huge that is where the value is. Uh, and again, I mean, if it can do that in just like under 12 months, under, yeah, well under 12 months, um, imagine what it can do in, uh, in a few years.
Yes, indeed. Oh my goodness. Especially when you consider I, have, with my own eyes, have witnessed the transaction volume per second on the chain above 3,000 transactions per second. Not per minute, not per day, not per year, not per week, not per month, per second. Just let that sink in. And that's nothing compared to what it's capable of. It is absolutely phenomenal. It is the ultimate network for digital technologies. Everything will run on this. All the central bank digital currencies will run on this. All the world's largest corporations will run their data on this. It is going to be absolutely huge. The entire internet will run on this. This is what it is about because blockchain for the first time ever allows data to be immutable and stored forever, as I said before, as a universal source of truth. So therefore you don't have to worry about fake news and all of that shit and data being fudged and those are central entities with control of it trying to change it, you know, like voting and all that kind of stuff as we're seeing in the, uh, the US election. It's just unbelievable, the, the corruption that goes on. And it's all due to money. Money corrupts power, or should we say absolute power, corrupts absolutely. And uh, yes, indeed, it does. So uh, now that we've seen those metrics, let's have a look at the shitcoin market because uh, obviously it's the talk of the town at the moment. Core coin taking a dive. Um, let's see what it's uh, looking like on the uh, on the week. Oh, it's still up on the week, but I mean, I mean, look at that. A fall from grace, should we say? So that's down from uh, thirty-four. Currently sitting at uh, 31. So, uh, yeah, a loss of um, 3,000. Just kind of like within a day, you know. Um. <laughs> uh, there's just, it's purely speculative. It's, it's number go up. Uh, there's no value behind this. There is no utility there. It's an absolute piece of crap. That's why these coins don't disappear. Because if... If they were uh, attached to, for example, a uh, a business, that business can go up. That business can go under. That business can go bust. That business um, can go bankrupt. It can run out of cash flow. It can run out of liquidity. And when the business disappears, the share price absolutely disappears with the business. However, these digital pieces of shit don't have anything attached to it. There is no business there that will literally like close down and uh, give it no value. It's just there like an absolute piece of shit. Like it, you know, it won't go away. Hence, XRP is in the green today. <laughs> These shit coiners with shit for brains, they'll believe anything you tell them. Yeah, back by the banks. Right, okay. Bitcoin, digital gold, digital gold. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just hilarious. The only thing that will wipe Bitcoin out, uh, well, like a uh, cool coin, is the uh, is is the block reward subsidy. And Blockstream know this, which is why they don't want people to use it. They don't want transactions on chain. They don't want the network to end up as a uh, as a self sustaining network. So if they get people not to use it, and you know everybody's concentrating on the number go up and scarcity make number go up, like willing the block halving along, you know eventually, well, even on the next one, there's only even there's only going to be three point one two. Um, you know, uh, bitcoins in each block. That's not enough to sustain the miners. Like nowhere near. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm sure I've explained this enough to anybody who's smart enough to actually understand uh, what it <laughs> what it is that like uh, that I mention on every show. But let's have a quick look. Oh, Stella is just. I mean, Stella. Look at that. Twelve point six one percent. XRP. Stella. Neo, Tron are all pre-mined. They are all exactly the same as XRP, and yet look at Stella, 12.92% up today. <laughs> like these are the people that we're dealing with, like absolutely, unbelievably stupid. Like I just can't, I don't have any other superlatives to describe them as. That's just the best I can do. <laughs> like li literally, there is only going to be Bitcoin left. And as you've seen, I mean, I've, I've went, I did my coin crap chart. I've literally studied all, I know everything because that's what intelligent people do when they do their own research and they figure it out. And then when they've got questions, they ask those other people who actually seem to know the answer and they will tell you. 
yeah, that's what every intelligent person should do. But um, like I said, uh, but but stupid people are dangerous, and the reason they're dangerous is because they're inconsiderate, and the reason they're inconsiderate is because they they don't bother doing the research. You know, they just literally they literally make stuff up, like try and try and make uh, try and join the dots in their own head and uh, you know, fulfill their own sort of like deluded uh, sense of logic, reasoning and rationale, which is just a completely non-existent. It's gonna be a real wake up call for some of these fools. Like, uh, honestly, um, the the reckoning is gonna be, that's what I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it the reckoning. Uh, like literally, you know, um, I'm doing my best to explain it like as clear as possible, you know, and, and I'm laughing because effectively, you know, the dumbness of these people does actually stress me out. And laughing is the only way I can just kind of like reduce the cause in, in my own head, thinking about how stupid they are. And it's just like, well, you know, I, you're free to do what you want then. See ya. <laughs> That's literally it. That's literally it. All right. So uh, let's get on with this. some of the rest of these metrics then. We'll have a look at Diego's tweet. Has uh, Twitter taken our like away? Oh, it's still there. Still stuck on 219 though. But uh, good of them to uh, good of them to keep it there for us. Uh, let's have a look at Ruthie's tweet. Oh, it's still there. Look at that. She's uh, shot up from uh, was it um, uh, 854 to 878. Twitter giving her a break here. Great stuff. And uh, let's look at uh, our man. I am Zatoshi. See how he's doing today. That's more like it, 60.3 followers. So again, for anybody who is maybe new to my show for the first time, if you want your uh, you know, your giveaways, your free giveaways, uh, probably, even though I'm obviously you know, a huge fan of uh, Handcash, uh, he uses um, scanning the barcode. This is easier to do with Simply Cash, which is what um, uh, most people do. Um, or, well, which is the, what the most people use for his, uh, for his giveaways. Uh, so I'll give an example of what he does when he just simply puts the um, puts the QR code up. Everybody can scan it. All you just simply do is like and retweet and just follow the instructions on the uh, on the giveaway that he's doing. My right, app. There we go. Just like that. Boom, boom, boom. He goes. A uh, password is Jack Lou. First is scan and uh, sweep and type the password. So uh, gets the cake. Absolutely awesome. But I mean, again, this was Jan's. Oh, this was Jan's second. This was two days ago. But I mean, check it out. That's awesome. These are the giveaways. So boom, 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 boom. Get your phone, scan it. Literally, it's like quick draw McGraw uh, is what you've got to be with his giveaways. It's uh, it's brilliant. He's given loads away, loads away. Like uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely fantastic. Love that. Ah, oh, great stuff. Right, let's get into uh, let's get into some of the gossip, shall we? I think that's. I think that's. I think that's everyone I can see. Great stuff, right? Well, um, hope you enjoyed today's show. So, uh, as ever, uh, be aware, take care, stay safe out there. Joy given, sent on tomorrow. Catch you later. Buy BSV.live, the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and watch the full episode on Streamanity for just 20 cents. Go to www.satoshi.tv. See the link in the description below. Bitcoin, one world, one chain. Yeah! One vision!